Like Fiddy's front tooth, the crypto market was mostly in the green this week. Bitcoin went above 7K for the first time in 20 days, despite all of the FUD coming from China and the rejection of the nine Bitcoin ETFs. The good news is that the kids, who no longer like 50 Cent, but this guy, are much more likely to hodl than the general population. A survey carried out by Coinbase shows that 18% of U.S. students' respondents either are currently hodling or used to. That's two times more than the average American surveyed. 17% of students surveyed said they were crypto literate, while only 9% of the general population said they knew anything about crypto or blockchain. This survey is particularly hopeful, as it shows that while the older generation may believe the FUD, the younger one will be the Bitcoin believers. The bad news, Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong said recently that mass adoption would also take some time. Also, this guy. This week, Yahoo Finance supports crypto, the wolf of FUD Street, Joseph Lubin doubts tether price manipulation, and North Korea is getting into blockchain. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your weekly HODLers Digest. We're filming here in San Francisco, right next to the Palace of the Fine Arts. Wahoo! Yahoo Finance users and HODLers have a reason to celebrate, but might be advised not to use their email account. You can now buy and sell crypto on Yahoo Finance, only on the iOS app for now. Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin are now integrated on its platform. And statistics are available for other cryptos, like Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum Classic, and EOS, but they currently do not have buy and sell options. This development has been welcomed enthusiastically. In April this year, Yahoo Japan confirmed plans to buy 40% of BitARG Exchange Tokyo and send executives to set up the exchange, set to launch in 2019. But be careful out there, guys. It was recently reported that Yahoo has been scanning people's emails for data to sell to advertisers. But if you still have a Yahoo Mail account in 2018, surely it's Yoohoo that is to blame, no? Former fraudster, money launderer, and penny stock trader Jordan Belfort thinks there are a lot of scams around Bitcoin and doesn't think the SEC will get involved with Bitcoin. He said, the central banks don't want it. They've worked so hard to stop money laundering. There is just no way. World governments don't want it either. In terms of regulatory problems, Belfort thinks that we've just hit the tip of the iceberg. He thinks there are a lot of problems surrounding Tether. However, he does not think that Bitcoin itself is a scam. According to The Wolf, 95% of things are legit, but it's the 5% that are criminals that will take the whole thing down. The Wolf of Wall Street too. Welcome to FUD Street coming soon to theaters near you. Be sure to subscribe to one of our favorite crypto YouTube channels, Hackdroid Crypto. Similar to Cointelegraph, their channel covers blockchain startup reviews, token project overviews, mining, and crypto news. Ethereum co-founder and all-around crypto wizard Joseph Lubin doubts manipulation accusations against Tether. A rare voice of dissent, it must be said, in an industry that appears to believe the worst of the stablecoin. After the publication of a study by the University of Texas in June, Tether fell under suspicion for Bitcoin price manipulation in 2017. The paper claims, purchases with Tether are timed following market downturns and result in sizable increases in Bitcoin prices. But Lupin is unconvinced of manipulation accusations against the token. He said that based on our analysis, we do believe that Tether are backed one-to-one -one by US dollars in bank accounts. Although, he added that it is still not 100% solid in terms of a story, from my perspective. In June, a law firm did an unofficial audit of Tether's accounts where it was discovered that Tether could back each token one-to-one -one with US dollars. But the firm noted that it is not an accounting firm and did not perform the above review and confirmations using generally accepted accounting principles. Is Lubin right about Tether? Or do you believe the accusations regarding price manipulation? Let us know in the comments. Mount Gox is not an actual mountain. And yet for those burned by the hack, it certainly felt like they were climbing one attempting to recoup their investments. Well, now it seems they might have reached the summit. Mt. Gox creditors can now file rehabilitation claims, so it is likely that most of the 24,000 victims will eventually get their funds back and even could see returns on their four-year-long forced unintentional hodl. This is all thanks to a group of Mt. Gox creditors 
who successfully mounted an effort to pull the exchange out of bankruptcy proceedings and into civil rehabilitation. While some of the defrauded customers can still keep pressing for criminal charges against former CEO Mark Carpellis, the bankruptcy estate funds are now managed by an independent trustee who will oversee the civil reimbursement process. Now to the strangest nation on God's green earth, North Korea. According to a report from South Korea's state-run Korea Development Bank, North Korea has attempted to mine Bitcoin. According to a local news outlet, the mining attempt, which was reportedly conducted on a small scale between May and July 2017, seems to have been unsuccessful. KGB's research team also reported that North Korean tech firm Chosun Expo is allegedly now in the process of developing a BTC crypto exchange without any further details provided. There were also reports this week that North Korea plans to host an international two-day conference on blockchain and crypto in Pyongyang this October. Apparently, it will bring together experts from around the world and North Korean business officials. You know, the guys that run all those great businesses in perhaps the most heavily sanctioned sovereign state in the universe. Well, Kim, we have our block show in Singapore coming up in November, so October might be a little busy for us to make it. Our prediction for keynote speaker in Pyongyang. John McAfee, the man who just doesn't give up. Like if you think that children are the future. Like, subscribe, and hodl if you think that they should have a better taste in rappers. Like Eminem, who actually referenced Bitcoin on his latest album Kamikaze with the lyrics, Remember, everybody used to bite nickel, now everybody doing Bitcoin. Cointelegraph. Like, subscribe, and hodl.